Everything about the Infinix 035G is built around premium with a flagship vibes. For a competitive price of 318,000 Naira or just $347 depending in your region, you are getting a premium looking design, a 108 megapixel rear camera with max 4K 60fps capability, a 50 megapixel vlogging selfie with max 4K 60fps as well, a curved AMOLED display with max 144 heads of refresh rate, a Dimensity 8020 chipset paired with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of EFS 3.1 storage and last but not least, an in-display fingerprint scanner. While the specifications are well appealing on paper, do they translate well in real-life usage? Or is the Infinix 035G worth your time and money? My name is Maya Michaels and here are my two cents opinion of the Infinix 035G. There is very little to critique about the 030's 5G design. It looks super premium for its price and you can see and feel how much work was gone into making the device. It kind of shares the same design language as the Zero Ultra from last year. At just 7.9mm, it places itself very well in the hand and it's pretty lightweight at 190 grams. Whereas the Zero 020 and Zero Ultra from last year came in at 196 and 213 grams respectively. For colors, it is available in two colorways, the golden hour of which I got for this review and the rum green variant with an echo leather finish on the red. And I have to say, this is one of the best smartphone designs I have looked and felt in this price segment. There is a zero branding at the back panel with a soft touch feelings to it. And the top left features a huge, huge camera model with a metallic feel to it. The camera island is golden in color seen and this design choice may be a bit polarizing because some may find it slightly garish. However, I think it works for the sub $347 price segment and the phone definitely stands out. For overall durability, the screen and the rear is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5 which is a welcome development from Infinix and it is rated IP53 which means it has protection against damage from water splash and dust. Do keep in mind, it's not a water-resistant smartphone, so trade carefully when close to water. So out of the two shades, I would definitely recommend buying the green color variant. It's definitely an eye-grabber design and one of the best I've seen at this price point for an Infinix device. On the right side of the device is the tactile volume rockers and power button, while on the bottom is the primary stereo speaker grill, a USB Type-C port, a microphone and a SIM tray. Sadly, it got no micro SD card support, making it the third Infinix device to opt out of an SD card slot. Since Infinix is telling us the 256GB of internal storage was enough, 3.5 headphone jack is nowhere to be found as well, an act I will forgive due to how sweet the device feels. On the top of the phone is a second speaker grill, you'll also find power by Infinix and a second microphone which I think serves as a noise cancellation for a better voice calling experience and audio recordings. Moving on to the display, the device sports a premium looking ultra slim 3D curved display with minimal bezels on the sides and slightly thicker bezels on the top and bottom. It is a 6.7 inches AMOLED screen with full HD plus resolution and 144Hz refresh rate. Now that's a game changing display and scrolling on this device feels super smooth and thankfully the refresh rate applies in apps such as YouTube and Instagram too, which sometimes doesn't happen on budget phones. The display supports 100% DCI-P3 color gamut and comes with 2160 PWM dimming, so the strain on the eyes is lowered when you're using the phone in dark areas. The display is vibrant and pretty color accurate. It is also wide vinyl L1 certified so you can watch shows in HD on OTT platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime videos. DRM info tells me the phone supports HDL10, however Netflix doesn't detect that, which is a bummer. I hope Infinix can fix this via a software update. These are some really impressive sets of specifications for the price and fortunately, they translate well in real-world usage. For the experience, the serious speaker setup on the device is mostly treble driven and has very little bass. However, it gets adequately loud to fill the room. It's not the best out there but it does a good job for what it is. How old were you when you found out you could use your Android phone to charge other Android phones? and even iPhones. Okay, technically, not every single Android phone can do this. And overall, the display is quite bright for its price. 
It is rated at 950 nits of peak brightness and in my test, I recorded about 915 nits in high brightness mode. So screen eligibility in harsh sunlight is not really an issue, though it could have been better. As to the performance, the MediaTek Dimensity 8020 chipset, which actually is a rebadged Dimensity 1100 and it's a decently capable processor. While the device is definitely not the fastest performing phone in the mid-range segment, it will give its competitors a tough run for their money. Supporting the processor is 8GB or 12GB of LPDDR4X RAM. Multitasking is exceptionally smooth, like super super smooth and pretty fast and yet, you still have Vesel RAM which will add nothing to the existing swiftness of the device. Still a gimmick in my opinion. In benchmarks, the Infinix 030 did a commendable job. It got one of the highest scores in its segment, only to be beaten by the powerful Redmi K50i that comes with the Dimensity 8100 5nm chipset. In Geekbench, once again, the Infinix 030 5G was near the top but still top level scores. The device also scored exceedingly well, the best in my test in PC Mark work, meaning it will be reliable to perform any productivity related tasks. I was able to play Call of Duty Mobile on high graphics and frame rate settings and it performs splendidly with no lag or stutter. Genshin Impact and Asphalt 9 also run very smoothly but do keep in mind it does heat up slightly during long sessions. It is also very capable of handling heavy duty tasks such as photos and video editing but slows down slightly when rendering videos. For day to day usage, you shouldn't have any troubles using this device. Moving on to the software side of things, the UI of the Infinix 030 5G looks surprisingly clean. The company has definitely taken steps to improve the overall look and feel of their XOS overlay. Animations are smooth, icons look clean, and it's a visually pleasing experience. However, there are blood waste in the form of Infinix apps and some third-party apps as well. And sadly, you cannot uninstall any of these apps, so you'll have to deal with them. Further numerous customization choices are available, such as wide range of always-on display styles, themes, live wallpapers, seamless integrated with the AOD, various fingerprint animation styles, and additional options to explore such as the anti-theft alert feature, which can capture the photo of the user who may be trying to unlock your phone after two failed attempts. Sadly, Infinix will only provide one major Android update and two years of security patches, which is lackluster and disappointing. The 108 megapixel is Samsung Isocell HM6 primary lens with optical image stabilization, a 13 megapixel ultra wide shooter, and a token 2 megapixel lens, which I think a 5 megapixel micro lens would have been a better choice. For selfies, the phone has a 50 megapixel Samsung Isocell JN1 sensor. Infinix also provided up to 4K at 60fps video on both the rear and front cameras, which is a rarity at this price. The output of the 108 megapixel primary camera is pretty decent in daylight or indoor lighting. The dynamic range is good and the detail retention is decent as well. You will notice a bit of detail loss if you pixel peep, but the quality is good enough for quick social media shares. Okay guys, so this is what you'll be getting from the rear camera 108 megapixel of the Infinix 030 5G shooting max 4K 60 FPS. And also testing out the stabilization here, what do you think about the resolution of this device and the optical image stabilization as well as the mic picking up the audio for this test. I'm going to be running a little bit just to test the image stabilization so you'd know 
what you're getting out of the videography of the Infinix 030 5G with the optical image stabilization and uh, it's not looking quite well here it's looking shaky as you can see it's not stabilizing and uh, this is kind of a mess I think Infinix need to do a little bit of an update on their next uh, Android OS to fix this uh, shaky stabilization because this is so when it comes to value for money, it'll be hard to look past the Infinix 030 5G. It's an exemplary mid-range smartphone that is well worth its asking price. The design is fantastic, the AMOLED display is bright and vibrant, the performance is top level for the price, and the battery life is pretty decent as far as light usage is concerned. My biggest gripes are the mediocre low light camera performance, especially since daytime photos actually look pretty good, and only one major Android update which may be a deal breaker for some. Overall though, if you're not someone who clicks a lot of pictures in low light or shoot videos, the Infinix 030 5G just may be one of the best well balanced between smartphones. So that's it for now guys, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.